Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Bay Area Case Studies Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions that's happening this evening, so be sure to attend other ones. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com backslash BACS. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters and we'll begin this evening with Amherst College. Thanks, Owen. Um, hi, everyone, welcome. Let me just share my screen uh, quickly here. Here we go. Uh, my name is Alexandra Hurd. I'm very excited to be here this evening. I do miss seeing all of your faces, but if you have questions, I know all of us are paying attention to the Q&A, so please drop them in there. Um, I, I go by Lexi, my full name is Alexandra, she, her pronouns, and I'm one of the Associate Deans of Admission at Amherst College in Amherst, Massachusetts. I've worked with students from Northern California for the past five or six years. I also work with our transfer student population, which has a robust community college uh, population and uh, military connected student population in there as well. Uh, and a little map to show you where we are. So Massachusetts is a small state. Uh, we are located in the western part of the state, which is about three hours north of New York City and about two and a half hours west of Boston. Um, we are named after the town of Amherst and that's where Amherst College originates from. And we're a very college oriented town. Um, so we have about 35,000 year round folks in the town. Uh, and when school is in session, another 30,000 students because of our consortium, which you'll hear about in a little bit, join. Uh, the campus is right adjacent to the downtown Amherst area, which has everything that you might need, many of restaurants, bars, bookshops, um, coffee shops, all kind of small independent um, type oriented things. There is a CVS that's right in town as well. And the town next to Amherst, uh, just a mile or two away, has a lot of your bigger box stores. So Target or Chipotle and Starbucks and, and um, Trader Joe's and all these and all those kinds of places are just a short bus ride away. And we're all connected together through a free public transportation system called the PBTA. A little bit about us as an institution. We are a small residential, highly selective liberal arts institution. Uh, when I say small, we have about 1,850 students. We are an entirely undergraduate institution. So we have no graduate programs and no graduate students. And that is our full focus. So all of the resources, the classes, the staff, the faculty, the internships, all of those opportunities are there focused on our undergraduate students. And that is our bread and butter. Faculty that come to Amherst come there because they really enjoy teaching. They really enjoy working and, and uh, interacting with our undergraduate students. Um, and we have a robust number of research opportunities on our campus across the curriculum, whether that's the social sciences, humanities, natural sciences, um, mathematics, and foreign languages, uh, which is a pretty big intention. So as a liberal arts institution, we study a lot of theory, um, not a lot of things in pre-professional nature. And that is so that you develop critical thinking skills, problem solving skills, and the ability to communicate. Research pairs really well with that because in that way you're working not only with these very big picture ideas, but also learning to apply that. And inevitably uh, when that is applied, um, we realize that the world is kind of a messy place. Um, there's a lot of intersections, a lot of different complexities and nuances and context to consider. And um, that we see as a big uh, draw of a liberal arts curriculum as well. A little bit about our student body. Um, we do firmly believe in education as something that's a process. It's something that's evolving and alive. It's not something that's static. You don't find many Amherst professors that are gonna sort of come into you know, the classroom, impart their knowledge on you, uh, and then that's it. Um, it. Learning is something that happens together. It happens outside of classrooms as well as inside of classrooms. And we think really deeply about our community on our campus as a result. So. Uh, we think about bringing together students from many different lived experiences, identities, backgrounds, lived experiences, uh, because as you're tackling the world's toughest and most difficult problems, you want to really make sure that you're thinking fully about those problems and all of the different perspectives and, and the intersections and overlaps um, and the interdisciplinary nature of all of that. So very common, you'll find students that are approaching things from very interdisciplinary aspects, and that works with our faculty as well. About 98% of our students live on campus. So I highlight that just because we are that kind of college campus where um, students are looking for a kind of 24 seven uh, opportunity where 
uh, learning is, is happening all the time. Um, certainly there's learning that's happening in the classroom, but also in those conversations that, that happen on the way to class, in clubs, when you have fun activities, there's connections to be made everywhere. The open curriculum is something I highlight because that is one of the distinctive features of Amherst that differentiates us from some of the other small liberal arts institutions out there. Um, so we do not have general education requirements, nor do we have distribution requirements. So we require our students to be full-time students. We require that you're there for four years. And in your four years, we require that you complete a major. Other than that, uh, the curriculum is your oyster. So you have an academic advisor. They're your sounding board. But there's a lot of flexibility. There's a lot of responsibility to be thinking about your education. What do you want to get out of it? Do you want room to explore? Are you someone that has a really firm idea of what it is that you'd like to study? Um, and the open curriculum is one of those features of Amherst that most students will point to as a very distinctive um, and influential part of their decision or about their time at Amherst. So I do want to highlight that. The other aspect um, that I'd like to highlight is our five college consortium. We are part of a, a consortium that has four other institutions in it, hence the five colleges. All in all, there's about 30,000 undergraduate students that are right in our area. Three of those five colleges are located in the small town of Amherst, Mass itself. Um, Smith College and Mount Holyoke College are two liberal arts institutions that are in our neighboring towns. Um, a mile from our campus is the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. That is the public flagship research university for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And you can see that there's about 22,000 undergraduate students there. Academically, you can take classes at any of these institutions completely free of charge. So you get the benefits of being at a smaller institution, but a lot of the resources of being at a much larger institution in the area. And you can also participate in any of the clubs, organizations, activities, all of those things that are happening on the other campuses too. I believe that I might be coming up on my six minutes here and I wanna be mindful of everyone else. So um, I will stop there, um, put up some deadlines really quickly and then pass it over to Owen. Great, thank you so much, Lexi. Our next presentation this evening comes to us from Tulane University. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Al, let me make sure that my audio, can you hear me, Owen, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, excellent, thank you. Uh, well, hello everybody, my name is Jonathan Gutman. I am an admission counselor at Tulane University in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, I work with students from Northern California and I'm also on the international team. So I work with students from Latin America and China. I'm um, really happy to be talking with you today. I'm originally from Sacramento uh, and I'm a Tulane alum. So uh, I know what it's like to move a couple thousand miles across the country to go to school. Uh, and I wanna tell you a little bit about Tulane. So academics, you're hearing a lot tonight. So I want you to take away one thing about academics at Tulane and it's this. We do not expect you as a 17 year old or 18 year old to know exactly what the rest of your life is going to look like. Uh, that is big, that is important. And that is why if you are accepted into Tulane University, you are automatically accepted into all five of our undergraduate schools. So School of Liberal Arts, School of Science and Engineering, School of Business, School of Public Health, and School of Architecture. That means that if you, you know, think you know what you wanna do going in and change your mind, no problem. Uh, if you don't know what you want to do coming in, that is okay too. I was definitely in that position. I had many interests and I loved the fact that I could come to Tulane, explore lots of different things. There weren't any sort of rigid barriers preventing me from, you know, taking classes in one school, taking classes in another school. Uh, and I ended up double majoring and double minoring. <laughs> Very common at Tulane. We got about 40% of our students with a double major. Uh, so, so the key word is flexibility. We are going to allow you to be able to, uh, you know, branch out, do what you want. If I had to describe Tulane in like sort of one phrase, I would say it's this. We are a medium-sized private major research university in the city of New Orleans. Uh, so breaking that down, I think our medium size is important. Uh, we've got about as you can see, 7,000 undergrads, uh, about 12,000 total. So that puts us in a really cool place. Uh, more on that later. But we've got sort of like, in many ways, we've got big school opportunities with more of a small school vibe. So as you can see, eight to one student to faculty ratio, average class size of about 20. So you've got all those opportunities, but you really get to know your fellow students and professors, which makes a big difference. A little bit about research. Uh, as I mentioned, we are a major research university. 
Um, there is an organization called the Carnegie Foundation, which categorizes all of the universities nationwide based on the level of research going on. Uh, so Tulane is a tier one research institution, which means that out of all of the universities in the US, we are in the top 2% when it comes to research. Uh, so we've got research happening in every department. We have over 75 majors. So everything from chemistry to architecture to public health, we've got it all. Uh, I did linguistics research. I'm a language guy, so I studied linguistics. Uh, looked into something called lexical choice, which is why do we choose the words we choose? Really interesting. I could talk about my research for a long time. Uh, but suffice it to say, we got a lot of opportunities here. And because um, we, we are a smaller school, we actually have the distinction of being one of the absolute smallest schools in that tier one research institution category. So that means we've got a lot of those research opportunities, but we don't have like 30,000 grad students that are gonna you know, swoop in and take all of those chances for research. So a lot going on there. I'm happy to talk about more about that in questions as well. Student experience, in one word, I would say balance. Uh, we are a school that's you know really great academically, top 50, all that. Um, but we want students who, you know, are also doing other things, not just spending all of their time in the library. So we've got a ton of campus organizations. We're division one in terms of, of sports. We play in the American Conference for football. Uh, and we are a school with a lot of school spirit. You can really just walking around campus, you can see people shouting roll wave. Uh, the green wave is our mascot and it's, it's a really fun place to be. A little bit about service and service learning. We are really proud to be a, a very much a community service oriented institution. In fact, we were the first major research university in the United States to implement a service learning requirement into our core curriculum. Uh, so that means that you, you, before you leave Tulane, you will do two tiers of public service. Uh, that manifests itself in a plethora of different opportunities. Um, we, have, we have service opportunities regardless of your major, whether you're neuroscience, whether you're public health, whether you're a classical studies major. Uh, and without going into too much detail, let me just tell you that it's really rewarding to work with the community uh, and to be able to affect change in a way where, you know, we're being respectful. Uh, we're not just like part of the city. We are actually an active part of the city uh, and making a difference in New Orleans, which is, which is an amazing city. And speaking of that, New Orleans. Uh, so as I said, you know, I went to college here. I, I came from Northern California and New Orleans is an amazing city. It is, it is a city uh, really unlike any other. We have uh, one counselor who likes to say it's the closest you can go to studying abroad without leaving the United States. French influence, Spanish influence, African influence, probably the number one music city in the world jazz, uh, music on the street, cafes, and we are very much a city that likes to celebrate. Uh, we actually have more festivals in South Louisiana than we do days of the year. So there was always something going on. And honestly, that really helps with the balance because you know, you go, you work hard, you study for your tests, but there's always something fun to do at the end of the day. So uh, happy to talk more about festivals later as well. And as I am wrapping this up, this is the last slide. Take a look at those numbers. I, I tend not to talk too much about numbers uh, for, for various reasons, but take a look, top left corner, number three happiest students. We really pride ourselves on being one of the universities uh, with the happiest students, because that makes a difference. You want to be, be happy at your college. So thank you very much. Uh, and I will pass it on to the next speaker. Thank you so much. Our next presentation this evening comes to us from Goucher College. Hi everyone, my name is Christopher Wilde and I'm the Associate Director of Admissions at Goucher College. I use he, him pronouns. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, so Goucher is located just north of Baltimore in the suburb of Towson. Uh, Towson is home to two colleges, including Goucher, a number of major retailers, restaurants, and social venues, all of which are a short walk or a quick ride share from campus. Our central location provides access to a number of major cities. We're 12 miles from Baltimore's Inner Harbor and downtown area, an hour north of Washington, DC, 90 minutes south of Philly, and a two and a half hour train ride to New York City. We're also about 30 minutes from the Baltimore Washington International Airport, which makes us easily accessible for students outside of the region. Uh, we were founded in 1885 by John Franklin Goucher as the Women's College of Baltimore, and we're originally located in downtown. Uh, in honor of Dr. Goucher's legacy of providing education to marginalized populations, the college was renamed Goucher College in 1910. His early commitment to social justice, global education, and innovation remain pillars of a Goucher education today. We moved to Towson in the 1940s due to the need for more space, and in 1986 went, went co-educational. In 2006, we instituted the requirement that all students study abroad, which I'll talk more about in a moment. 
Uh, we are a private four-year residential liberal arts college dedicated to preparing students for the jobs of the future, those jobs that don't exist yet. Uh, our liberal arts education includes the sciences and a focus on critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration, and communication, the very skills that are being sought by today's employers. Uh, we sit on 287 acres of wooded campus and enroll about 1,100 undergraduate students and 700 graduate students. Uh, we are a relaxed and friendly community where students are quick to say hello and professors know who you are both in and outside of the classroom. Our average class size is 17 and we have an amazing 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. As I mentioned earlier, one of Goucher's pillars has always been innovation. What, um, and this is demonstrated both in our classroom and beyond. Instead of a laundry list of general education requirements, our curriculum asks students to take a series of seminar, interdisciplinary, and proficiency-based courses that are adapted to their area of interest. Our complex problem exploration courses ask students to tackle real world current issues from an interdisciplinary perspective. For instance, the course Nations, Borders and Immigration asks students to study immigration through the lens of history, political science, international relations, sociology and economics. Our institutional commitments to two areas of justice, justice amongst people through race, power and perspective and justice amongst the natural world through environmental sustainability are encountered not in a single course, but throughout the entirety of a student's experience. We offer a variety of majors and minors that reflect liberal arts and new ways of learning, thinking, and doing. In addition to eight new majors this year, including education studies, engineering science, and professional and creative writing, uh, we now offer a four plus one BA MS program uh, with Johns Hopkins Carey School of Business and a four plus one BA MBA program with Loyola University of Maryland. A unique option, the individualized interdisciplinary major allows students to create their own major by working with a faculty advisor and pulling courses from three to four of Goucher's existing programs. Another one of our pillars is a commitment to global education. Since 2006, Goucher has had a 100% commitment to incorporating a global perspective throughout a student's academic experience, which means 100% of our students study abroad. Our study abroad options include semester long experiences and intensive courses abroad, which are three week programs led by Goucher faculty. Typically these experiences will take place during a student's junior year once they've declared their major or their minor. Community means many things to us. As a, as a residential college, more than 80% of our undergraduates live on campus all four years. First year students live in the first year village, a living and learning complex designed to foster community and collaboration and features a demonstration kitchen, performance studio, a fire pit, tons of hammocks, and all the rooms there are doubles. Uh, Mary Fisher Dining Center, which is centrally located on campus, are <clears throat> Is, and, uh, is centrally located on our campus. Our food service company utilizes about 30 different local farmers to supply us with fresh produce, antibiotic and hormone-free meats. And the dining hall is set up in stations that can accommodate a variety of dietary needs, including vegan, kosher, halal, uh, allergen-free and gluten-free. Goucher is a diverse community that reflects today's world. Students are attracted to Goucher because they can be their authentic selves. Uh, students who are successful at Goucher are, tend to be intellectually curious, are passionate about social justice and really have an eagerness to explore the world. Uh, outside of the classroom, our students participate in more than 60 clubs and organizations in Division Three athletics that include 10 women's sports and eight men's sports, a nationally ranked co-ed equestrian team, esports, intramural and club sports as well. Uh, we offer an individualized and holistic admissions process that is test optional and free of an application fee. There's no cost in applying to Goucher and we use the Common App, which helps streamline the process for our students. Students can submit their application for early action or regular decision consideration, and both deadlines are non-binding and offer rolling notification of admissions decisions. An added bonus is that uh, merit scholarships are automatically considered with admissions, so no extra hoops to jump through, no additional essay, no additional application. Uh, you're going to automatically be considered with your application, and if you are admitted to the college, you will receive that merit scholarship notification in uh, that letter of admission. Uh, thank you again for your time and for learning more about Goucher College. Please visit our website to learn more about us, and I hope to hear from you very soon in the near future here as you continue about your college search. And I will turn it back over to Owen to pass it off to our next presenter. Great. Thank you so much. And as we're about halfway through our presentations, just a reminder that the Q&A widget is available should you have questions about specific institutions or broader ones for all of our panelists. Up next, I'm pleased to introduce Miami University of Ohio. Awesome, thank you so much. Hello everyone, my name is Larissa Marple and I work for Miami University located in Oxford, Ohio. We have nothing to do with the University of Miami in Florida and in fact, we were founded before Florida was a state. We are named after the Miami and Native American tribe that used to inhabit this area of Ohio. So some fun facts for you there. 
a little bit about our institution. We are a four-year public university in the state of Ohio. We have about 17,000 undergraduate students, but our average class size is only about 30. So we like to say that we have the brains of a big university, the resources of a big university, but really the heart of a small school. The campus itself is pretty large, but in the classroom, you're definitely gonna feel that one-on-one -on -one attention. We have over 120 areas of study, 18 Division I varsity sports teams, and 600 student organizations. I would describe our students at our campus as highly active, highly involved um, in the campus community and the community at large. Additionally, about 63% of our students graduate with a minor or a second major. So if you're interested in multiple areas of study, that's absolutely something we can accommodate. Despite being a public institution, we are liberal arts based. So all of our students are gonna take core curriculum classes, but it's a little bit of a choose your own adventure for those first couple of years while also taking major related courses. But as long as you've declared a major by your second year, you'll still graduate on time. And if you're looking to do multiple things, we can absolutely do that for you. We also have 30 combined degree programs. So if you're interested in getting a master's and a bachelor's degree at the same time, we can usually accommodate that within four or five years, depending on the program itself. But that's something you would apply to after you're a current student at Miami University. Additionally, our professors are ranked top five in the country for undergraduate teaching at public institutions. This just means that your in-class experience is extremely hands-on. The professors are going to know your name. They're going to work with you individually. You're not going to be sitting in a large lecture hall and over 80% of our faculty are full-time and tenured. Additionally, because we are an undergraduate focused institution, last year we had over 2000 undergraduate students that were working on funded research with a professor. So if that's something you're interested in, you can start right off the bat at um, in our first year research experience or apply as an upperclassman to work with a professor and really start to understand a little bit more about how that um, the research process works at a public institution. Additionally, this is a photograph of our beautiful campus. The poet Robert Frost visited and said it was the most beautiful campus that ever there was. And of course, we're biased, but we would definitely agree. It is a gorgeous place to live for four years. As you can see, we have gorgeous, historic, large red brick buildings, the big green quads. We do get all four seasons. I'm from Texas, and if I can survive the winter, I think anyone can. We do get a true fall where all of these trees, the leaves change colors. It's absolutely gorgeous. We do get a winter. I will tell you though that the students are typically on break for the worst part, aka the coldest part of the winter. So you kind of get a little break there, uh, but it, the campus in snow is absolutely gorgeous. All the walkways are cleared before you go to class though, so you don't have to worry about it too much. And then the spring and summer are absolutely beautiful. So great place to live, great place to experience a different part of the country for sure. We are also consistently ranked as one of the best college towns in America. Oxford itself really is centered around the university. So it's a true college town. We're about 45 minutes north of Cincinnati. That's our closest major city, major airport, et cetera. But it is a great place to really build strong community because everything really is Miami focused. So this is a picture in the park in the middle of our uptown area, which is just adjacent to campus. Everything in Oxford is walking distance. The roads are red brick. It really is kind of that idyllic college town that you think of. For academics, we are divided into six different academic areas. As you can see here, the top four, so arts and sciences, creative arts, education, health and society, and engineering and computing, if you're accepted to Miami University, you're automatically accepted into your major. Creative arts has a couple that require auditions or portfolios, but for the most part, the admissions committee says that we believe you're qualified, you automatically get into that major. With the pharma school business and nursing, they're a little bit more competitive, so it's possible to be admitted to Miami University and not admitted directly into those majors. For the business school, you can apply after your first year as long as you have a 3.0 GPA. And then for nursing, it is direct entry only, but it is a younger program. We are actually building a brand new building for our health sciences and nursing will be located in there. So there are some really great resources coming forth if you are interested in that. Our application deadlines are December 1st and February 1st, but we do have early decision, which is binding, early action, which is that non-binding 
application and then regular decisions. I always recommend to students if you're able to apply um, the earlier the better by December 1st, we'll guarantee you our um, higher amounts for merit scholarship and you are more likely um, to be put in that application, that acceptance pool. For early decision, you do get a decision within two weeks, but like I mentioned, it is binding. So I'm always happy to answer questions about students that might be interested in that as an option. This is a quick overview of our accepted student profile. What I like to highlight here is one that we are moving forward with a test optional policy. We really mean test optional merit scholarships, honors programs, competitive programs like business and nursing. Everything is test optional. It really does not um, have a significant impact one way or the other. And I'm always happy to talk about individual applications as well. You can see here where our um, GPA, ACT and SATs are. We do utilize a weighted GPA, so just keep that in mind. And the other thing I like to highlight here is that only about 43% of our students are actually from the state of Ohio. So yes, we are a public institution, but a majority of our students are coming from out of state or international. So you're definitely not the only student from your state, from your area, et cetera. We are pulling students from all 50 states and then 68 different countries as well. I also like to highlight that we have something called the tuition promise. And this just means that our out of state tuition fees, books, et cetera, are all consistent for four years. So we do not increase the price while you're enrolled as a student, which is really beneficial and just makes it a little bit easier to plan for college. And then lastly, these are some of our statistics about our graduates. Long story short, if you come to Miami University, we will make sure that you are graduating and successful no matter what area you would like to move into. So thank you so much for listening. I will share my contact information. And I'll pass it back to our facilitator. Thank you so much. Our next presentation this evening comes to us from St. John's University. Good evening, everybody. Spare me one moment. Share my screen. All right. So I'm coming to you from New York City here at St. John's University. This picture you see here is our Queens campus. So we actually have a couple of different campuses. To give a little background, we're a Catholic Vincentian institution, institution, sorry, getting late in the East Coast, uh, institution that started in 1870. So the campuses that you see in red are the ones that we have in New York City. So we have our Queens campus, as I just mentioned. We have our Staten Island campus, which is a little bit smaller than Queens. And lastly, our Manhattan campus. Just to quickly note, our Manhattan campus is specialized, so only actuary science, risk management, students can study there. If you are interested in business, you do have the option to study there, but you can also study in Queens or Staten Island, so that's the only major that can study in all three. The campuses that we have in blue are the ones that we have overseas, so we have a campus in Rome, we have a campus in Paris, and we have a campus in Limerick, Ireland. Some of our key numbers, we have just over 17,000 students. So we're considered a medium-sized university. We have a 17 to one student to faculty ratio. We have 47 different states represented as well as 123 different countries. So it's a lot of students come from many different areas. We have over 180 different clubs and organizations as well as 17 division one sports programs as well, and also 100 different major, 100 plus different majors, excuse me. Here's a breakdown of the university and different colleges that we have. So you have our College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, our College of Professional Studies, College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, School of Education, and lastly, our Tobin College of Business. For the honors programs here at St. John's, when you're applying as an undergraduate freshman, there's no extra step. So we automatically consider you for it. If you meet the criteria for the incoming year, you will actually receive an automatic invitation that asks you to opt in or opt out of the honors program. For double majors and minors and also multiple dual degree options, you cannot apply as an incoming student, but if you do have questions about that, you can always reach out to us and we can explain to you the process and how that works. But we do have a pretty good amount of five-year programs as well as double majors and minors available to you. As I previously mentioned, we are a Division I sports school. We are in a Big East Conference, as you can see there. This is the list of sports that we have on the Division I athletic level, but we also have club and intramural sports available to you as well if you are somebody who likes to actively participate in sports, but not necessarily on a collegiate ath uh, athletic level. Inter I mean, excuse me, um, study abroad programs. So we have a couple of different programs here. Our global passport program is for our first year students, aka freshmen, where you could go seven days in Rome or seven days in Paris at the end of your semester, whether it's the fall or the spring. Followed up by that is our most popular program called Western Europe Semester, where you spend five weeks in Rome, five weeks in Paris, and five weeks in Limerick. You take two courses in each country. So for example, if you're starting in Rome, 
You'll take two courses for five weeks. Once those two courses are up in that five-week period, you're completely done with those two classes. Then you fly out to the next country and you take two more classes. And then finally, the last country where you take your final two classes. And they're usually core-based, so we do that so most students can have the opportunity to study abroad. Study Abroad Latin America is a newer program, so you have Costa Rica and Colombia available to you at all times. But I do want to mention that if there's a country you're thinking about that's not listed here, we can pretty much send our students anywhere in the world, so don't feel like you're confined to those different areas that are listed in this slide. Internship opportunities, we have a 94% employment rate after graduation. A lot of that has to do with the different internship programs that we have. Most of our um, majors actually require internships. You can see the diversity in the internships that we have here, ranging from sports to uh, media to uh, law enforcement to healthcare. So there's a lot of different areas where students are getting involved and definitely getting that one-on-one um, -on -one opportunity in terms of getting hands-on experience in the fields of their choice. Applications, so important to note. To give you just the admission numbers, we are test optional, but if you are looking to submit test scores, our average SAT is 1220. Average ACT is a 25. We are a super score school. So if you take it multiple times, whatever the average and out, is, whatever your score is average out to is what we will use. If you're applying test optional, you will see here it says recommended application documents. So two letters of recommendation, personal essay and resume. Um, the only thing that's not optional for test optional students is the essay. It does become required. If you're submitting test scores, the essay is actually not required. However, I still recommend if you're applying test optional, or if you're applying with test scores, definitely submit all the documents that you see listed there. So if you have recommendation letters, send them in. If you have essay, send it in. If you have a resume, definitely send it in because all it's gonna do is help your application. And the average GPA is a 3.5 weighted or a 90 out of 100, depending on the scale. For our admission deadlines, we have it listed here. So November 15th, early decision, early action will be December 1st. After December 1st, we do rolling admissions. So whenever you apply and whenever you fall into our queue, that's when you'll get a decision. The only two programs with a hard deadline are pharmacy and biooptometry, which have a hard deadline at February 1st. But if you're not applying to either of those majors, we have a rolling admissions uh, process. For merit scholarships, that's also automatic. So when you get your admission letter and your acceptance, you have the amount that you received in merit. Any scholarship that you see there that has an application deadline means it has a separate application. So if you ever have questions about that and extra aid, you know, definitely feel free to reach out to me and I'll definitely give you more information. Here's our tuition. So we have a Queens tuition, Staten Island tuition. One important note, there's two drastic differences between the uh, tuitions there. With our scholarships, they eat up the differences. So essentially you'll be paying around the same price. So it's a little confusing. And lastly, if you ever want to visit St. John's, you could go to stjohns.edu backslash visit, take a virtual visit. We do have on-campus visits as well. So if you're ever in New York in the upcoming months, definitely reach out to me. But hope you guys enjoy the rest of the night. And I'm going to pass it on and also put in my contact information in the chat. Great. Thank you so much, Anthony. Just a reminder that we will have time for Q&A at the conclusion of our presentation. So certainly feel free to put those questions in the widget right now. But for now, I'm pleased to introduce Bryn Mawr College. Hello, everyone. Thank you again for joining today. My name is Kayla Hamdani. I'm an admissions officer with Bryn Mawr College. I'll go ahead and share my screen. So Bryn Mawr College is a selective liberal arts college for women of around, around 1,300 students located in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, which is a short ride away from an amazing large city, Philadelphia. So your opportunities academically and socially really are limitless. Bryn Mawr is a place where women claim an education. Often we ask our students to reflect on their Bryn Mawr experience. Many of them say that when they were sitting where you are, they weren't interested in Bryn Mawr because it's a women's college. Maybe they liked the community or our rigorous academics, but after being here and experiencing this empowering environment, they say they would choose Bryn Mawr all over again because it's a women's college. So now I'll talk a little bit about our academic opportunities. Students are encouraged to explore their interests and passions and our core curriculum takes an innovative approach to engaging students in a variety of ways. So we don't have traditional requirements like Math 101 or English 102. Instead, we have our approaches to inquiry, which help students develop vital and transferable skills that prepare them to be lifelong learners in a global and diverse community. Students often find a major, a minor, or even a career interest through taking a course to meet a requirement. And our students are really excited about the challenging and engaging coursework and research, strong bonds with faculty, students, and alumni, and our more popular majors are mathematics, psychology, English, biology, and computer science. So student learning and engagement goes beyond Bryn Mawr's campus. 
a part of an active consortium with Haverford College, Swarthmore College, and the University of Pennsylvania. These all expand students' opportunities academically, professionally, and socially. You'll find that 77% of students will complete at least one internship in Philadelphia or beyond. And our Career and Civic Engagement Center has over $750,000 available for, some, for summer funding. We also offer a variety of combined degree programs, which allow you to earn your undergraduate and your graduate degree in a shorter amount of time, along with a variety of study abroad opportunities. So we like to say our students are leaders because at women's colleges, women's leadership is not the exception, it is the norm. Every position of power and opportunity is available to women from our self-government association, which is the oldest in the country, to research opportunities and internships. Our students really are actively engaged in problem solving and affecting change. Now I'll talk a little bit about our programming. We have a Thrive first year course that all first year students are required to take to help you get acclimated to what college life is like. Um, especially for our first generation students, we have a specific Thrive course for them, as well as a variety of resources available, such as emergency funding, counseling center support, as well as a mentorship group. Now notice also on their screen is something called Community Day of Learning. With the Community Day of Learning, it's an opportunity for faculty, students, and staff to all participate in a day of learning surrounding diversity, equity, inclusion efforts. Currently with COVID, we're participating in it in a way via our teach-ins that are often throughout the academic year. So now you'll see some of our admissions policies. So you're able to apply via the Common Application or the Coalition Application. If you're interested in applying early decision, we have two deadlines of November 15th and January 1st. And for regular decision, the deadline is January 15th. Bryn Mawr has been and will continue to be test optional for US citizens and permanent residents. When it comes to financial aid, we meet 100% of demonstrated need, and that need is gathered through completing the FAFSA and the CSS profile. Strongly encourage you to follow us on social media to get an insider's look about what student life looks like, as well as join our virtual information sessions. Please do not hesitate to contact me via the email on your screen, and also feel free to take a picture of what you see on your screen. So thank you all for joining tonight. Great, thank you so much. And thank you to all of our presenters for sharing your institutions with us. We do have a few moments remaining, so we'll bring back everyone for some kind of quick Q&A. And I think one question that's commonly asked by many students as they're beginning to explore campuses is what a specific event or tradition, something that's really unique about your, your institution and that people really look forward to maybe. And so we can go in the same order as our initial presentations. And Lexi, do you mind leading us off? Absolutely, happy to. Um, something that I've missed most since I've been working remotely this past year, uh, but our students were still able to experience if they were on campus themselves, our, our seasonal festivals. Uh, we have a wonderful fall festival, winter festival, and a festival in the spring. Food is a constant at all of our institutions, and that is no exception um, to our fall festivals. So lots of games, student performances, um, the president, faculty, staff are all around. And the best thing is also that they get to bring um, their whole family. So it's a very nice opportunity to get to know um, your faculty and staff members and their families. And we think a lot about community at Amherst and this is one of those great um, newer traditions actually that we have on campus that is really exciting. All right, I'm next up. Uh, as I mentioned, New Orleans is a city that likes to celebrate. We've got a lot of festivals. Um, we are also very much a food city. So uh, one festival that Tulane actually puts on for the community is called Crawfest. It is actually one of the largest student run music festivals uh, on any college campus in the country. And basically everything is done by students. It's, it's a big music festival. So students bring in the musicians and, and uh, volunteering and the food and all of that. Uh, and every year we get about 12,000 attendees. Uh, it is named at Crawfest because it's named after crawfish, which is that uh, Louisiana seafood delicacy, you know, like those little lobsters. Uh, and every year for the festival, we have about 19,000 pounds of crawfish. So super fun time. You could just roll out of bed, walk a couple minutes, and you got a music festival in your backyard. Uh, so that's, that's a really fun one that we like to have at Tulane. Uh, my favorite gap tradition probably has to be opening celebration. A lot of colleges will kick off their academic year with kind of a stuffy convocation where the faculty process in their regalia and there's all these speeches. 
Um, and instead of doing that, we bring all the classes together um, in a big kind of outdoor setting. There's a welcome from the president, a welcome from the SGA president. Uh, and then there is a giant kind of class spirit contest. So all the classes are decked out in their class colors. We have this giant shouting match to determine which class has the most, most class spirit. Uh, and then it turns into a giant community picnic where we all get to come together as faculty staff, welcome our new students, welcome our returning students, and just have a great moment together as a community before starting off the academic year. At Miami, I would say one of my favorite traditions is our um, holiday party that is hosted in the uptown area. So that picture I showed of the park, they put an ice skating rink up there. There is a Christmas tree farm, different student organizations and religious organizations will perform songs and share about their different traditions. There are reindeer. Um, it's really just a fun time and it's a good, usually during finals week or just before. So it's a really good time for students to take a break, get some hot chocolate, walk around, get out of the library. Um, and it's usually just a really fun evening for students and for the entire Oxford community as well. I would say my favorite tradition here at St. John's is actually centered around our uh, Midnight Madness event. So those of you familiar with Midnight Madness for like Division One basketball, it's a huge kind of celebration to start the basketball season. We have usually like a performer come before what we call a tip off. And then you should, they show the case their skills. Always think we're going to be the champion that year, right? But it never happens. But it's, it's part of the fun. But um, a lot of it is tied around our community service as well. So that's the first thing you think of like, oh, okay, you know, basketball, that's cool. Like it's exciting. But the my favorite part is that we tie the entire weekend around community service. So we uh, raise money for cancer. The basketball team actually does something called dribble for, uh, excuse me, dribble for the cure the next morning. And it's part of our university service day. So the entire university community, so the students, staff, administrators, we all come together to do community service within the tri-state area. And the basketball team is kind of like the champion of it and they start the day. So it's pretty cool to see that like it is not just about the sports, it's also about what the school is about and then I'll give you back to the greater community. So definitely my favorite tradition there. And at Bryn Mawr College, we have something called WTF Week, which stands for Welcome the First Year's Week. And it's hosted in the spring semester for the upperclassmen to really finalize welcoming the first year students, the culmination of their first year in college. But it's also an opportunity for faculty and staff members to also partake in some of the fun activities that shape this event, as well as it also being an opportunity for newer staff members to participate as well and to be welcomed to the campus. Great, thank you so much. And we do just have a few moments remaining. So if anyone um, would like to kind of chime in with a, your favorite tip or piece of advice for kind of navigating a college search. Okay, I have one. Um, my biggest advice is do not be afraid to reach out to the admission counselors at the college that you're interested in. Uh, because it can be a little intimidating, right? This is like a process that can be a little scary, especially if you don't know how to navigate it. As you have hopefully seen throughout the presentations tonight, we are not too scary. We're not like uh, intimidating people, right? We, we do this job because we want to help you. Like we're there to talk with you. We're there to answer your questions. Uh, so really like if, even if, if you have questions about a specific institution, or even if you just have questions about like, how do I write my essay or like, what's the best way for me to approach this process? Um, we like to help you. We like to talk to you. We're not going to be like, uh, you know, on a, on a level where we're, we're like laughing at you or anything. No, where we are happy to help you. Um, and I would just encourage you all to make, take advantage of the resources that are at your disposal. And I would add, check out a couple schools that you're not familiar with or that you've never heard of or the first time you're hearing us is tonight. Look into schools that you're not as familiar with. We tend to be kind of in echo chambers. And so we hear the same schools from the same people and um, you know, students from the, your high schools may tend to go to some of the same institutions year after year. But there are some really awesome institutions out there you may not have even heard of yet. And that may be the perfect fit for you. So always check out different schools, do your research and definitely be open to suggestions from your counselor and from anyone else, even if it's a school that you don't necessarily know much about yourself. Great, thank you for those, those tips as well as your initial presentations. I'd, 
I'd agree, Jonathan. It's not too scary of a panel. So I think the, the session went well. Um, thank you as well to everyone who joined us and tuning in this evening. We really appreciate that. And at the conclusion of this webinar, you'll be prompted with a brief four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, just a reminder that there are other sessions happening in the next block, and we hope you'll tune in for those or check out the recordings, which will be available on the same website where you registered for this one in about a week's time. Thanks so much and have a great night.